for larger nine patch blocks or when I really want to show off the center fabric of that block, I love to use the quilting to create a different shape. In this next design, we're going to connect a few points to create a block with more than just four sides. But even though it looks different, it still uses the same techniques and ideas that we've already learned. In the corner blocks, I'm going to quilt a diagonal line that goes from one side to the next. Then I'll add a few more echo lines just to reinforce that shape. Traveling along the seam will help me get to the next echo line. And then when half the block is filled in, I'm going to travel along the top of the block to get to the next corner. And I'm going to do the same thing, quilting a diagonal line and then echoing it to fill in half of the square. And I'm going to do this again in all four corners of the block. I'm using the slim ruler to help me quilt those straight-ish lines. However, if you don't have a ruler, no problem. What you can do is just twist the quilt ever so slightly so that you're working in a more vertical or horizontal motion. And move your hand smoothly to the other corner. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to keep going until I get back to my starting point. Now you can start to see that secondary shape come out. So I'll travel along the seam about a quarter or a half of an inch, then work my way around the whole block, echoing the shape I've just quilted. Of course, this echo line is optional. I just like how it kind of reinforces the shape that I'm creating with the quilting. Well, once I get to the starting point, it's time to play around with different designs and really have fun with this block. In these little orange triangles I have left, I'm gonna use a continuous curve design. It's gonna curve from the outer corner to the inner corner, out to the middle and back, and then on to the next side. That's going to move me to the opposite side of my triangle so that I can work my way around the block. Now in this yellow stretch, I'm going to quilt the wishbone design. It helps move me across the block to the next orange triangle. It's pretty easy to quilt once you get the hang of it. I'm going to quilt the line that angles down, loop around, and back up the opposite direction. And keeping these angled lines parallel will help ensure that it's somewhat consistent. I know that I want to end towards the top of my block, so if I find myself not at that point, I'm going to use traveling to get where I need to go so I can continue on with quilting the block. I'm using this bright green thread so that you can really see what I'm doing. On an actual block, I'm going to use a thread color that blends in a little bit better. A light yellow would be perfect for this area because it will blend into the lighter fabric and not be so stark against the darker fabric. So I'm going to continue working my way around the block until I finish it up. Once I'm done with the outer part of the block, I'm not quite finished, I still have to quilt the center square. And I'm going to go ahead and do that continuous curve just to keep it nice and basic in the center. A little stitching in the ditch for good measure, and this block is finished. What I love about this technique is that you can make it as complex or as basic as you'd like. 